How's it going guys? Happy New Year 2020. Look at that, it's the start of a new decade. Woo! So, um, three years. I've been here for three years now. Starting on the working holiday visa and um, subsequently ending up where I am right now. So, this video, I'm going to be talking a little bit about my journey itself and what I actually personally went through. So, um, of course, as usual, don't forget to uh, comment down below if you want to sort of see other things or figure out other things or, or look at new things or, or have any suggestions for what type of videos I should make just because, yes, I haven't exactly been uploading too often or too frequently, you know, but it's, uh, <laughs> I keep saying it, so surely I'm getting to that point eventually, but yep. Yeah. Anyways, so 2020, it's a new decade. And I guess, where should I start? So I'll start with my working holiday visa, right? So three years ago, um, it was actually 2016 when I had applied for the New Zealand working holiday visa. So of course, as you can see, as per my earlier videos back in 2017, um, I started this YouTube channel and I started uploading content um, just based off the, the, the you know, videos and, and what I knew or what I figured out or what I learned in the past. And the reason why I started uploading all these videos in the first place was because I realized that not a lot of people actually know or even realize that there is this opportunity to s learn, to study, to work abroad, um, work overseas, especially in New Zealand, you know? And yet, because not a lot of people are doing this, so obviously not a lot of people know about it. And because of that, you know, that's where I feel like all these issues with people overstaying and, and thinking that coming on a visitor's visa is fine to work and blah, blah, blah is okay because they didn't know that there were any other options besides that. So pretty much the main reason why I started this channel was because I wanted to get the word out and I wanted to, yes, even though my Malay is absolutely shit, as you can probably read from the subtitles down here, um, it, it was still something that I felt like, you know, I should probably do just to sort of educate and, and let people know that this visa exists, specifically this New Zealand one. Um, but yeah, anyways, that's besides the point. So 2016, um, so I'm 27 this year, so four years ago, that was what, I was 24, 23, 4, 5, 6, 7, yeah, 23 years old. I had no idea what I was going to do with my life, you know. Um, I finished um, studying um, after uni and I realized that, like, life was a little too short to sort of go on that same pathway of, you know, studying and then getting married having kids and then dying old you know what i mean and and just working work 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 but in saying that you know obviously i didn't have any money now granted <coughs> my parents and my family members definitely helped a lot they were quite supportive of me because i can honestly say that i am relatively privileged to be able to have gone on this journey and been supported and funded along the way especially from my parents and uh, my family members um, but yeah, no, so I didn't really know exactly what I was going to be doing with my life. So I ended up um, studying German for a year. So the entirety of 2016 was me learning German because I figured that like I was going to go to Germany or at least Europe to be able to um, continue and like do my master's or continue my studies there in Europe. And that's the whole reason why, you know, there's like this little German sketch. Yeah, it can auf Deutsch sprechen, übersetzen und verstehen, aber nur B1. But yeah, so from that, basically, um, I kind of realized that, okay, to, to, to go to Germany, to go to Europe, you know, obviously you need some money. So I figured out that like, oh, maybe there's a way to make money or earn a little bit of money or anything like that. And yeah, I stumbled across this working holiday visa in one of these like backpacker buddies forums on Facebook because I was, you know, quite keen to travel or at least explore or have a look and see, uh, you know, what's happening and stuff like that. So I applied for the working holiday visa back in 2016 and oh man, that's a story. So get this, right? The visa itself opens at 5 a.m. Malaysia time, which is 10 a.m. New Zealand time. So I stayed awake at around 3 a.m. I woke up 3 a.m. prepared, you know, all logged in, ready, got my forms. Well, not really the forms, but you know, got the web page all loaded and signed in and logged in and everything like that. And then as soon as the clock hit 4.59, 
everything just crashed. It was insane. And it felt as though, you know, like there was just a lot of traffic heading towards the site. So no one was actually able to log in. Um, so what I ended up doing was refreshing. I pressed F5 and refresh this tab, refresh the next tab. I was on my phone. I borrowed a tablet to be able to refresh that on the tablet as well. Because to me, I figured that as long as I managed to get to that page, on anyone, then I'll just start focusing on refreshing that particular page itself. So I refreshed, 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 and I finally managed to log in again at around 5.30, 6 a.m. So by that point, obviously, um, you know, my hopes were kind of dashed because based off experience and based off what other people had um, mentioned and talked about in all these Facebook threads is that yeah, there's a lot of people applying for this visa and you know, your chances are quite slim. So I was just like, oh, okay, I'll take it, I'll take it. So I stayed there, I was just refreshing away. I was just sort of trying to see, trying to figure out and test my luck and everything like that. And fortunately enough, by around six, 6.30, I managed to actually get into uh, a page where you know you actually could start applying for the visa you know the form actually genuinely loaded up for me but even that was a challenge because oh my god every single page after that loaded like it was i don't know 1990 you know what i mean like when the internet was in dial-up it was it was insane and and this was in 2016 so god bless those and congratulations to those who managed to secure the visa for 2017 18 19 and of course 2020 by the time this video is up the visa for this year is actually opening on the 23rd of january all the best good luck keep at it Anyway, so by around 6.37 a.m., uh, I managed to log in and I managed to fill out a couple of the forums and there I was just refreshing each page because everything was slowing down, everything was grinding to a halt. So I managed to reach the last page where you have like this review and confirm and there's a declaration that you take and I realized that I had misspelled my name. <laughs> so I had to go back to the first page and you know refresh and make sure that my data and everything was still there to be able to go back and fix the change. So by that point, it was already like 10 a.m., 11, 10.30 uh, a.m. or so. And I had class, I had German class. I still remember it to this day. I had German class that started at 10 a.m. itself. So I knew I was already gonna be late. So whatever, I'm sorry for our child. It stood me light. So, what I ended up doing, um, so once I finally reached the payment page and everything like that, it was already, I don't know, 11 a.m. if I remember correctly. So yeah, imagine staying up from 3, 3 a.m., 4 a.m., 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So that was a good eight hours of just sitting in front of the computer, refreshing the page, trying to get this working holiday visa. So yeah, fortunately enough, I managed to get it. And then that was pretty much it until um, January of 2017, when I left the country on the 6th of January, uh, literally two days after my niece was born. Ah, oh, beautiful niece. And yeah, I guess I've, I've been here since. Like, yeah, I, I did go back to Malaysia like a couple of times, especially this past December. Um, but besides that, it's just been, a trip it's just been an experience it's been insane it's been crazy now i guess the other thing about me is that when i came to new zealand my main goal wasn't exactly to make money but it was always about looking for experience so i realized and i knew that the working holiday visa only lasted for six months yes you can extend it to nine months but only if you've done three months work in like say agriculture or horticulture or even like you know the fishing industry or anything like that and to be honest with you, I, um, I'm, I'm not keen. I'm not keen to actually, um, I was never keen to, you know, work and do fruit picking. For me, I realized and I thought that, you know, I could use this and, and gain proper career building experience from it. So when I first landed in the country, I knew, like, I, I didn't really do that much research, but I knew for a fact that I needed, in order to get a job here, you need to settle your tax, your IRD, and your bank accounts, and of course, your mobile number, basically. Um, so I ended up going to a couple of banks. Um, so I landed in Auckland, and then I ended up going to the ANZ on Queen Street, but then I realized that there were so many people there, and I needed to make an appointment before I even got there, and you can make an appointment online, but, you know, time was ticking because obviously I wanted to secure something as sooner rather than later, you know, because you always hear all these scary stories about how someone comes into the country, into a new country. And, you know, especially if you've only got six months or you've only got a year, you know, you, you, they end up not finding a job until like 
a month later or like two, three months later. And obviously that wasn't something that I wanted to experience firsthand. So I ended up actually um, setting an appointment with ANZ because I realized, you know, ANZ is a pretty trustworthy bank and everything. Um, but I went and actually opened up an account with Kiwi Bank. So I went to Kiwi Bank, um, which was right opposite Sky City. There was one in the city anyways. I walked in and for fortunately, you know, didn't have to set an appointment or whatever, managed to open up a bank account right then and there. Because so how the process works is that you need a bank account to be able to send um, and, and get your IRD number, your tax number, Inland Revenue Department number. So once the bank account is open and you've got your IRD number, then yes, you can actually start to work. Because see here, no one will hire you if you don't have one, a bank account number and obviously a tax number because everything is so regulated and strict. So. Sure, I'm pretty sure there are like, you know, cash under the table type jobs around there. But, you know, I wanted to make sure everything was above board, everything was legal. And what I was doing was, uh, you know, with the law instead of breaking it. So I settled the bank account in like my second day here. First day, obviously dealing with jet lag and everything like that. Second day, settled the bank account. Third day, I started applying for jobs. Now, when I was looking for jobs, I realized that, you know, my resume probably wasn't really up to the standard, but that's the whole thing, you know? Um, I ended up, oh, I'll show you. I actually ended up bringing like, <laughs> So I had copies of my resume, plus I brought this folder along with me. So this is all like my, my important documents and stuff. But so I brought this folder along that had like my transcripts and um, I'm just gonna have to blur a couple of these. But like my transcripts, my like, you know, sigils, my certificates of like participation, what I did in the past in uni and all this wank, basically. And um, yeah, no, I just figured that I would be able to sort of explain to them that like, look, yes, I hardly have any work experience, but you know, I'm quite eager. I'm, I'm, I'm happy go lucky. I can do the job and I'm dedicated and I'm committed, you know? So I applied for a couple of roles. Um, and fortunately I managed to get a call back for a telesales consultant role. So it was doing sales and it was selling broadband to people. So, you know, if, for example, you've ever had someone call you say in the middle of the night or, you know, during work hours going, Oh, Hey there, Mr. So-and-so, would you like to buy broadband? Uh, that was, probably me probably me well during that period anyways of that january march um so i figured well look as long as it's a job you know it's it's gonna get me anywhere and i realized that in terms of the experience that that was gonna bring surely it was gonna be a good sales experience you know because that's what it is at the end of the day you need to be able to communicate and the best way to communicate is to know how to sell so i got into that job i lasted for about whew, trains trains uh yeah i'm living right next to a train track by the way it's here in avondale new zealand so um yeah bear with me but yeah so i i got a job doing telesales so i was selling broadband to people and then uh it only lasted for about three months because it was pretty high pressure environment so if you didn't manage to get at least five sales by lunchtime sorry five like you know Genuine people signed up, people bought the package, blah, 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 it signed the contract by lunchtime, you get sent home. So it was pretty crazy. And even then my work hours was like 12 to 8 p.m. at night, you know? Um, so pretty hectic the first couple of months, um, but I got there. Um, fortunately enough, yes, I did manage to at least secure five sales, but even then, you know, it did take a while. My first month was all right second month i didn't really do that bad, that good and then by the third month i wasn't really making too many sales and i was getting sent home quite often and quite frequently um but yeah so after that role um i you know two months in i figured that like look i can't do this so i should probably find something else so i started applying i started looking at other places and everything like that boom bam boom i managed to secure a job um it was still in telesales or telecommunications slash call center type of an environment but it was for an insurance agency and um i figured that well look because it was more of like an account management type of role where you had to you know take care of clients and make sure they do their claims properly blah 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 this and that so it wasn't really selling but it was still customer service customer care so I figured hey look why not give that a shot because obviously when you know how to sell and don't get me wrong I don't know how to sell properly or or enough but that skill that I gained from learning how to communicate and how to talk 
uh, better definitely helped me to secure this role because during the interview they would ask me so why why are you the best candidate for this role and i'd just be like well hey look um i come from a sales background so i understand the importance of taking care of the customer you know what i mean like it's always good to give that personal touch to the customer care experience so fortunately enough alhamdulillah i managed to get that role and i was working there for the next two months um well because i was on the working holiday visa right six months remember um two months well i ended up working there for a year um but we'll get there so anyways when i started to realize that my working holiday visa was finishing um what i ended up doing was actually instead of coming back to malaysia or leaving the country i pretty much fell in love with the place and i decided that hell well look you know, my previous experience within science. So now I wanted to switch to business or at least do something that wasn't really related to science. So, hey, I ended up doing a one year postgraduate diploma in business. Um, so it's pretty much just something that, you know, could help me transition from like the scientific background to like more of a business background. So but that's the thing, you know, so. Uh, the money that I collected up to that point, I managed to use to be able to, you know, obviously fund myself to pay for the course and everything like that. Um, a lot of the unis here, they you can pay by semester and whatnot. So that was all good. Um, but there was a minimum payment, blah, 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 you know, to get the visa and so on and so forth. But, you know, that's another story for another day. Um, but anyway, so I, I decided to continue my studies here. And also because I realized that New Zealand... You know, the education system here is quite nice, you know what I mean? Like, it's pretty good, you know, life skills, it's it's European-based, you know, it, it, it's transferable in Australia, transferable in Europe, blah, blah, blah. So why not, you know? I wasn't really going to lose that much um, of a foothold if I gained that New Zealand-specific sort of skill set. Um, so I did that one year course and then during the my study So obviously when you're on a student visa, you can't work full-time anymore So I managed to convince my employer the insurance agency um, To switch me into like a part-time role and that was fine. I could only do uh, 40 hours a week, but it was still okay I was still managed and I still sort of sustained myself through you know working part-time now granted You know, I wasn't traveling up and down the country, but you know, I haven't exactly done that anyways because I knew and I realized that like, look, traveling can can wait, you know what I mean? At the end of the day, now what matters most is gaining those skills. So being there and blah, blah, blah. So yeah, while I was working there and while I was studying as well, I met a couple of friends and this and that, and it was pretty cool. It was pretty chill. Um, and then a year later, uh, the insurance agency um, wasn't really able so I once I graduated and once I finished um, actually the insurance agency wasn't really able to sort of support me you know because they obviously needed a full-timer you know in, in that role that I was doing so I was like no nah, no nah, that's fair that's okay it's all good um, so I looked for other opportunities and it was at that point where I bumped into and I met my friend now um, so he used to be my old colleague um, so I bumped into someone um, and and he was just like, oh, hey, there's like an opportunity here um, with this university. Um, would you like it? And I was just like, yeah, sure. Um, sorry, it's a polytech. Uh, and I was like, yeah, sure. Um, let's go. Could be keen, uh, you know, and it was for a placement consultant role. So what that is, was essentially I helped students find, uh, you know, internships, find jobs teach them how to improve their skills, teach them how to communicate better, teach them marketing skills, you know, how to say use YouTube to learn about digital marketing because that's how you market. You know, you learn about the algorithm and blah, 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 and this and that. And yeah, sure, I don't know everything about it, but you know, it was still enough to actually give them that spark to make them realize that like, look, at the end of the day, you should be multi-dimensional. You should at least learn all these skills so then you can, you know, use it and pick and choose. And that's the thing. So during my interview for this placement consultant role, uh, I remember my ex boss, she was um, asking me, so why do you think you're the best person for this job? And I just told him, well, look, you know, I started off in sales, so I knew how to sell. And now I got into account management, insurance, so I knew how to take care of people and manage people's expectations and blah, blah, blah. So now I was looking for that, you know, recruitment, that human resource, that, that you know, training, that development, that sort of niche, how do I say, motivational 
type of role, right? And so in terms of what I could bring to the table, I told them, well, look, I come from a background in education anyways, you know, in my scientific career, or rather, you know, during my studies, I was an active debater, this and that, blah, blah, blah. And I pretty much just explained that, look, given all my skill sets, uh, given my skill set, sorry, and what I can bring to the table, what I think would be the best key selling point for me as an individual is that you would be hiring me Arif Khalid and not anyone else. And um, yeah, cheesy as it sounds, it kind of worked to my favor because, you know, at the end of the day, I've managed to, you know, in, in, introduce new things, create new leads, you know, get opportunities and so on and so forth so much that I was actually recognized and I was given an award and look, awards are second nature, but that's the whole thing, right? So I managed to secure employment there. I was still working part-time while I was finishing the course that I was on. Um, but once I finished the course, then um, they gave me a full-time opportunity and so on and so forth. And that was my uh, 2018, 2017, 2018, sort of like, yeah, 2018, 2019, sorry. So that was pretty much where I sort of figured that like, look, it was it was okay it was it was a good opportunity it definitely taught me a lot about um placement consultant you know hr stuff motivating people motivating students especially and yeah definitely helped but of course all things had to come into an end and i just figured that like you know at the end of the day it was a good learning experience for me don't get me wrong um but i just needed to move on and you know find and, and better myself and gain new skills so now I'm working in another um, industry altogether. So it is the healthcare. Well, it's not really healthcare, but it's health and safety in like audit compliance. So uh, it, it works with like the hazardous substances industry here. And um, long story short, what it is, is um, just me being the operations manager for this company to sort of learn about the operations and manage the business, make sure everything moves you know, and, and everything moves smoothly. Sorry, that's the word I was going to say. Um, but yeah, in saying that as well, the interview for this current role that I got was the same thing, you know? So why do you think you're the best candidate for this role? Or rather, why do you think that, you know, with, with everyone else, you know, you switching all these industries, you know, it was sales, it was insurance, it was education. Now you're getting into the health and safety industry, chemicals. How, how, how do you justify that? And, you know, at the end of the day, for me, I just told them that, look, yep, I understand. I'm a bit of a mutt when it comes to all these different skills and industries that I've been in. But look, ultimately, what is it? It is me being able to transfer my skill set and also me being able to cross these different industries and bring, you know, the best parts from those industries into this role, into this current industry. And that's what I explained because I told them that, you know, from selling, I'm able to sell, obviously that's a given from account management. I know how to manage accounts, manage clients, expectations, make them happy. And then from education that gave me the human resource skills so I can manage staff below me and so on and so forth. And now I'm looking for that operational skills so I can learn about, you know, how a company works and everything like that. So yeah, that was it. So um, it's kind of insane actually to think about it, like coming into the country and then now three years later, and it's just like, Oh, wow. I mean, I'm, I'm even like, just like looking at like my old videos, um, especially that one about um, me talking about six months later on a working holiday visa. Um, <laughs> you should definitely check that out and see how different <laughs> my opinions are here. I mean, I remember, oh, oh cringe. Oh, God. Oh, Lord. Yeah. Anyways, um, let's not dwell on that. But uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. So three years later, here I am now. I mean, we'll see how it goes at the end of the day. I can't really say what's going to happen, especially with immigration being what it is. And look, it's no one's fault. Well, actually it is. It's you bloody overstayers. God, why? Don't. Please stop. Do not overstay, please. If you're on a visitor's visa right now and you're in another country, make sure you leave that country before the visa expires. Please, for the love of God, I'm begging you, please. Okay, do not overstay, you're welcome. Because it not only affects you, it affects everyone else, you know? Um, there's a quote. It's in Malay. Sebelangga or something, but please, please don't, okay? 
it's really important but anyways that's about it for me um i'm gonna be subtitling this in malay to be honest with you i want to make more videos in malay as well so about sejujurnya memang saya ni okay lah memang dah lama sikit tak cakap bahasa melayu apa semua tu kan tapi boleh je lagi tak ada masalah pun boleh je ber berbincang dan berbual dan bersembang dalam bahasa melayu cuma itulah <sighs> tak apalah apa-apa hal nanti terima kasih Thank you for watching this video. Um, like and subscribe if you feel like it. Maybe it'll help me out. Gives me that uh, motivation to keep going forward. <laughs> and of course, as usual, I'll see you guys in the next one.